right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Amy Looper, who is just over a state over in Arizona. How are you doing, Amy? Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm staying cool, I hope. Uh, Arizona in the summer is quite something. Yeah, indeed. We've had actually rain this year, so it's good. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 actually. Uh, and Amy is from um, Relativity Sales and uh, tech founders and salespeople. And we want to talk about virtual selling because, let's face it, Amy, a lot of people were kind of bounced into virtual selling because of the pandemic. And even after a year or so of doing it, I still don't think everybody really knows how to do it as effectively as they as they can, as they possibly could uh, what's your sure. thoughts yeah i think there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of opportunity to leverage the technologies that are out there now for us to really make those deep connections as you know i think the world is still kind of like do we do in person meetings do we not do do in person meetings um, and so you kind of have to really be comfortable with being in front of the camera and doing some videos and you know, really connecting on a different way than we used to just do the handshake at lunch, you know? No, no, absolutely. And, uh, and I think and part of it, is, which has kind of been interesting to me is, so you've, you have some salespeople who, you know, they can walk into a room full of people or into a networking event and they're fantastic, right? They're on and they network. Um, but then you stick them in front of Zoom or something and you say, switch on your camera and they go, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's yeah. an interesting it's an interesting phenomenon that how you operate in in the real world and how you operate in the virtual world doesn't always just naturally transition. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think just, you know, uh, if you're looking for tips, I think just, you know, practicing and uh, utilizing a friend or utilizing even like your best customers and just getting in really comfortable with, um, you know, asking them questions and connecting with them and just having an authentic conversation via video first so that you're really comfortable with it. Um, it doesn't have to be over the top salesy at all. It's just being, you know, showing your unique self um, through that platform. Yeah, and, and, and uh, absolutely. And the other part I think too is, uh, I think people are slowly coming around to it, but actually, training your sales force and working with them on how to sell virtually. I think that's something that perhaps uh, a lot of companies haven't really invested the time and effort because I think, let's face it, they were expecting, oh, this is only going to be for a month or two. Yeah. 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 I think so too. Um, you know, I think, I think working on your value messaging is really key and making sure that you're really um, in tuned with your ideal customer. And then also, um, you know, really leveraging the tools like Google Alerts, LinkedIn Navigator, and all of these great tools that give you the insight of where people are, because people are definitely, your buyers are changing jobs, they're moving around um, very quickly. And so being able to stay on top of that and an, as automated as you can with that intelligence will help you really stay in front of the right people at the right time. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point because, uh, as you said, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people moving around. Things are changing. I think the the other part is, as much as some people would love to go back to just face to face selling and traffic, that's not going to happen the way it was. It's going to be a hybrid model somewhere, yeah. you know, some won't. But I think companies have seen that they can operate quite effectively virtually buyers have seen that ah, I don't need to take all this time out of my day to welcome somebody in the lobby and bring them in when I can do it. So, so yeah. the world, the world is forever changed. Yeah. I, I, I personally love it. Um, I think that we can get so much more done in this way. I think buyers love it. I work with a lot of um, cybersecurity buyers and they're just so heads down right now um, in just, you know, trying to secure their companies that they don't have time for the whining and dining and all the events, you know? Um, and so this gives them, uh, the, this gives us all the um, ability to really connect still and keep those relationships going um, without all of the hoopla. And I think um, employers love it too, because it's less budget, right? On the entertainment. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And I think the thing that people have discovered, like, for instance, we, we started working virtually five or six years ago, we made a strategic decision that we, we had some, we have programmers in an office, but the rest of it, we thought, why not get the best people wherever they are, there's no need to, to uh, locate people in a in an area around an office, especially high cost areas around an office. Uh, and I think more companies are coming around to that realization that you can actually develop great teamwork virtually. I mean, I have, I have people I work with fantastically, and some of them I've met maybe once, maybe not even. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so many people have said, you know, we've had a higher, you know, five or six people this last year, we haven't met any of them. And that, you know, that can be a little interesting. But, um, but also, I think, you know, the virtual office, how many times have you been in a meeting with somebody's you know, spouse needing something or a kid in the background. I know my kids are, are younger and they definitely uh, pop into a meeting every once in a while, but it's shown this um, element of we are all human, you know, and we yeah. all have personal lives. And then it kind of takes down that initial, you know, if you're just getting to know someone, it's that initial mask that maybe is brought down where it's like, hey, yeah, we're all in this together. Yeah, no, I, I mean, on these interviews, I've had kids, animals, I've had, I've had one great one where there was a cat that kept going by the back and then the person I was interviewing couldn't see it, but I could and the cat was great. Yeah. It just kept stopping and looking and going, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> but, but I, but I agree, I think it, le it lends a level of authenticity. So um, let's start with what do you what are some of the mistakes that you think people are making around virtual selling? And then we'll get into some more of the tips about how they can do it more effectively. I am not a big fan of the automated LinkedIn messages at oh. all. Um, and I think that, you know, while you can use some of the automation tools out there for intelligence to be able to focus on the right buyers, I think you still need to really um, connect, find the pieces of relativity. That's why I named my business Relativity Sells because it, you have to find that level of relevance with whoever you're talking with to create, open up the conversation and create the relationship, right? Um, and I think that's where sometimes we can get in a hurry and we can maybe not spend that time. So I really teach people and less is more um, to make it more effective. Yeah, I, 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 you, you, you touched on one of my uh, bugbears uh, on that is with that LinkedIn, with that automatic email. When somebody writes you a nice email to connect and they put a bit of effort into it and then you accept the connection and then pops up the automated email immediately drives me crazy. It immediately yes. puts me, to be honest, immediately puts me off. Totally, completely. And because it just, there's no, there's no relation there. There's just like, oh, it's going to be, I'm going to get spammed because that automated message came so quickly. So you're automatically on the defense. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it totally undermines the fact that Initially, I thought, oh, you put some effort into writing this connection. And then I realized, well, you didn't, did you? And you just undermined all the work that you just did. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so I agree with you about automation. I think, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, LinkedIn has become a bit of a spam platform right now. I know they're working yeah. to try and to try and stop that. But un unfortunately, that's what happened. So I think to your point, the less is more. I think the more the more focus you put on it the more uh, as you said the making it re making it relative uh is um that's going to make you stand out today unfortunately yeah. that will make you stand out yeah and you have to put extra effort into it i remember i connected with um a CISO of a very large uh, it was a fortune 100 company and i did that within a week when i was in corporate sales and people were like how did you get into this person i'm like well i actually figured out that they read a book and I read their 80 page book really quick. I skimmed it and, and found the bits and pieces that were really valuable. And I used that um, to open up a conversation. And it was like, I didn't have to rely on, um, you know, a business development rep. I didn't have to rely on some other tools that were out there to be able to like connect with a very high level person. Um, so if you can just do a little bit of research, I tell people it can go so far and open up so many more doors that you wouldn't even imagine. Yeah, absolutely. And even uh, one of the other things that I see often on, on things like LinkedIn is, okay, so if somebody posts an article and somebody sees that who thinks, ooh, they look like a prospect for me, uh, they just write, comment, great post. 
and you know immediately you never read it. It's uh, yeah. because that's not going to capture my attention. Now, if you say, oh, I really like what you said about such and such. Now you started some kind of level of engagement. But anybody just goes, good job. Great post. Love it. You know, you know, they haven't put in the effort. You know, they haven't read it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or they just have a community of people and they just kind of all do that with each other's posts to get the likes. And I often look at people that are doing that and I'm like, you are not moving the ball on any any relevant discussion for your business. Maybe it's just a friend's network and that's fine. But if you're trying to move the ball in business, you can't just go for the likes. You have to go for the actual meat of the discussion. Are are there any are there any uh, strategies that people can use that maybe aren't that obvious to most people? I you know what I think is really helpful. I had a I had a rep come to me once and said, you know, I'm having a hard time with people showing up to my meetings. So eventually, you know, obviously we went back and looked at the value messaging. But then I said, you know what? People are getting so much from Slack to LinkedIn to their own internal systems. It's information overload. And so I really think the video can cut through that. If you can create a really quick video and be really comfortable and you don't have to be all professional and, um, you know, really polished or anything, but I think just saying, Hey, reminder, we have an upcoming meeting can be really effective in reducing no-show rates. If you're experiencing that, if you're experiencing people not um, responding to something that you're sending, maybe you're a sending it on the wrong platform because they don't use it or maybe they're just overloaded. And so even putting video and email or any of those messages that you're putting on a social platform can be really effective because they can see um, and hear from you in a minute or less of you know what you're trying to get to, what is your point? And so being really crisp and clear about what you need the call to action to be is uh, important. Yeah, I, I think that's an excellent point, especially about the no-shows because I think that is, that's a phenomena now that's growing because and and people have all the best intentions and they say oh yeah 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 amy uh, absolutely yeah I'll see you for that meeting next week when that time comes around so much else is going on maybe the, as you said they're overloaded overwhelmed and the first thing they go is like oh, I, I just cancel that or don't show up or forget yeah. about it so anything as you said anything you can do to keep yourself top of mind in an elegant way is is a good idea yeah, and I think it's important to remember too. I think it was a challenger sale uh, folks that you know brought up that 57% of buyers are actually doing all of their purchase process evaluation kind of online before they reach out to a vendor and engage in a sales conversation. So buyers are just so much more educated in those early stages that they may be avoiding you because they just simply haven't done their own due diligence and own research that they feel like they need to do before engaging in a sales conversation. So kind of giving them those educational pieces and helping them during that process can be effective. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And and I think the, the, the flip side is on the one hand, they're more informed. On the other hand, they're actually overwhelmed with the amount of information. So in some ways they're, yeah. <laughs> they're kind of paralyzed. So anything you can do to help help them will will bump you up the queue i think yeah i think so too yeah. um so where do you see where do you see virtual selling going in the future because let's face it it's it's here to stay and it's and it's going to be an integral part of how most companies do business so where do you see yeah. it going you know, I see, um, you know, I see a lot of automation being done for on the front end so that we're not spending a lot of time as salespeople focusing on well, who do I need to talk to, let me document stuff, let me, you know what I mean, like that stuff should go away and I think I think it's heading in that direction hopefully with, with leaders really encouraging that behavior because sellers are spending only about 34% of their time according to Salesforce of actually selling right. So, um, so we need to shift that paradigm, but I think in virtual sales, we have that ability to, um, you know, really create more community and maybe create more of those like peer to peer networking groups and, you know, getting, getting groups of your target buyers together, get them talking, get them, you know, helping them network and, um, you know, creating these little, um, micro groups, I think could be a way of, um, engaging buyers on a different level than we have in the past. Yeah, I think that's great advice. You just touched on something there uh, about selling time. I just wrote that down. Uh, I think the other part is too is, uh, 
you know, pre-pandemic, there was a lot of talk about digital transformation and a lot of companies paid lip service to it or were going, yeah, we'll get around to it eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now I think it's become an imperative. And if you think about selling time, I mean, if you only got 37% selling time, there's probably a lot of routine rote tasks that you are doing that could be automated, that could be moved into the into digital sphere. Not your, not your quality interactions, don't automate, you know, keep those as real but try and automate or use processes and digital transformation to take the load of non-selling stuff off your salespeople. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. They've got enough on their plate and, and uh, you know, documenting notes in a CRM is super important, but also not important at the same time to their, uh, you know, to the overall, um, you know, yeah, and, and like I said, there's so many things that you can you can actually automate right now. I mean, we have an automated engine in, in our CRM now, and we have probably increased the productivity of our sales people. Actually, it's almost exponential at this stage mm -hmm. uh, and allowed them more valuable, more valuable selling time. Because at the end of the day, getting back to what you were saying earlier, we want them to research the, the people they're interacting with. We want them to tailor and customize their messages. We want them to be elegant yeah. in their outreach. But that requires giving them the time and space to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's great that you guys are working on, um, you know, really solving that problem because it is a problem. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the what's the one last piece of advice you would give to to salespeople, especially if they are uh, if they're faced into you know selling virtually for for the foreseeable? Um, I think I would give them the advice of getting really comfortable. Uh, you know, I think on. You know, gosh, I hate keep talking about video, but I think video really needs to be a, a big, um, you know, center of their focus just to be comfortable of um, presenting and communicating effectively, um, not just pitching, not just demoing, but really having those conversations where they can, you know, you can feel that person from the other side of the screen. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that I think that's a, a great piece of advice and, and very, very relevant. And let's face it, I mean, most people, even the video reluctant when it comes to selling, they're probably taking videos of themselves uh, recreationally. They're probably yeah. posting things, all of that. And so they just got to sort of go, OK, it's the same thing. And guess what? Watch your videos back and in, uh, and work on it and improve. And just like when we first heard ourselves recorded our voices, yeah, you might hate it initially, but eventually yeah. you you just have to accept that's who you are. <laughs> yeah, and the new generations are. I mean, they're used to this, right? So <clears throat> I'm a I'm a Gen Xer, and and you know I think there was a transition with some of us initially. But you know if you look at how our you know kids are growing up and using technology, you know they text, they um, do video chats. They're so used to this that I don't think this is going away. You know, they're just um, they're just uh, consumers of this type of media. Yeah, and they're they're the and they're buyers. They're the future buyers. Yeah. So you better get yeah. used to it. Hey, listen, Amy, that, this has been great. All of Amy's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, thank thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, I started Relativity Sales back in 2020 to really serve tech founders because spending over 17 years in corporate uh, SaaS and tech sales, I saw this gap between the tech teams and the sales teams, right? And everybody didn't really know, like, how are these deals getting done? And, and they kind of thought of sales as this four-letter word, right? Um, but as uh, tech founders, a lot of times when they're trying to, um, in the early stages, transition to the next phase, maybe hire their first sales team so that they can really focus confidently with a growing pipeline and consistent revenue, um, you know, that's what I help them do is to really scale to that next level so that they can focus back on the business and instead of being just operationally tactical in every deal. Yeah, and that's a that's a great uh, great service that that you offer because let's face it, that's what happens with a lot of uh, people when they start businesses is they get so bogged down in in all of the day to day and all of the 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 kind of tactical stuff that the the strategy of the business are actually operating. Yeah on the business as opposed to in the business gets lost. And, and then I think that's what that what undo, undoes a lot of people or burns them out. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, listen, thanks again, Amy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.